This video is sponsored by Gray Cells. How's it going guys? Welcome back to another uncommentary video where I get to talk about whatever I want to talk about and you can't stop me. Today I'm cosplaying as a floating head boy from Thor Love and Thunder. I hope you can appreciate the VFX work I did on this. It took a lot of time. And uh, speaking of VFX, that's what we're going to talk about today. Okay, okay, I'll stop. I'll walk in physically now. Oh! Okay, let's get started. Okay, so let me actually check when was the last time I talked about Marvel VFX. Okay, so it's almost been four years since I made that Marvel overuses CGI video, and the problem has only gotten worse. Now there aren't only movies, there are shows too, and it feels like so much content is being pumped out to audiences, there's very little room to breathe. Phase 4 feels like it should be over now, but I'm pretty sure it's only halfway through. And the stress these VFX workers must be going through must be immense because there's just so much coming out, and I'm sure they are killing themselves to make sure these movies and shows look amazing. And that's one thing I actually wish I talked about more in my first video, and I'm really gonna delve into it in this one. The entertainment industry, like most if not all industries, is built upon the backs of workers, and these workers here that are being screwed over are the VFX workers. Why do I say screwed over? Well, you're about to find out. But first, let's talk about some of the bad VFX that Marvel has been putting out recently. Right off the bat, a big one, Spider-Man No Way Home. This is not right. Tobey Maguire's neck is fucking broken. Tobey's neck should actually be more like this. But the question is, why is it like this? After you rig a 3D model, you have to paint the model's weights. If you don't do that, then the model just kind of distorts in the wrong ways. And it seems they didn't paint the model's weights correctly, including Andrew's. Like if you look at The Amazing Spider-Man 2, compared to No Way Home, the neck isn't broken here. There's also the possibility that the animator only animated the head joint and not the neck joint too, resulting in a weird looking pose. Ultimately, both of these can be attributed to not letting the artists have enough time to work on things. Hey, Dr. Connors. Hello, Peter. Poor Peter Parker. From Tobey Spider-Man looking exactly the same, if not worse, than he did in Spider-Man 3, a movie that's more than a decade old, to multiple practical scenes being filmed and then just becoming pure VFX, which means more for the artists to do, it's just not a good look. The animation for Andrew coming out of the portal is also wonky, that is just not how someone jumps and lands. Andrew saving MJ, again, the animation is just not very good. And I'm sure the artists realize this, it's gotta be frustrating to not be allowed to fully actualize your vision of a scene. Now to give an example of what stuff looks like when it is planned out, the gold suit that Peter has at the end of the film was definitely something that's been planned for a while, and so in every single shot, this is CG. The suit is completely CG, and they killed this. So you can see, when there's a lot of time and effort put into one thing, then yes, it can look amazing. But these artists are not given enough time to make the entire movie look this good. They didn't even fix these shots for the way more fun, more fun stuff, whatever the hell it's called version of the movie. But they did fix this one shot from Thor Love and Thunder. Let's give it up for Floating Head Boy, everybody. Woo! They actually remade the effect for the digital release. The effect still looks very rough. I don't think I should have to explain why it looks rough, but I will say this scene is the prime example for why this keeps happening. And that is Marvel's lack of commitment. Actually, real quick, I think this is a good spot to stop at to talk about today's sponsor. Being teased as True Detective meets Stephen King, Grey Cells is a supernatural noir graphic novel thriller. They actually sent it over. They actually sent over the graphic novel to me, and I have it, and I read it. And having read it, uh, read it as in me reading, not the app, having read Grey Cells, I can confirm it is very good. Grey Cells is a dark tale that plays into the fears that we have in the modern world. A distrust of authority, competing versions of reality, and losing the sense of what is true and what's a lie. When you start the story, a child's been kidnapped, so fun. You follow Lena, the protagonist, as she uncovers what seems to be a massive undertaking. Because there's actually been a lot of kidnappings, and they're all connected to this entity called the Frogman. I know that sounds like kind of not scary, but look at this bitch. That is, that's terrifying. And listen, being an independent creator, creating my own animated series, from one independent creator to another. K, Lawrence Goodman, you know, those involved with this novel, banger work. 
honestly. So make sure to check out Gray Cells. Go to the link in the description to get yourself a copy. You won't regret it. Full digital and print copies are available, and use Brown Table 10 for 10% off. All right, now from talking about chill independent art to the multi-billion dollar enterprise that is exploiting its workers. And that is Marvel's lack of commitment. The higher-ups at Marvel, the directors, now you have this whole committee changing shit up. And because of that, now the VFX artists and CG artists have to work double time to make sure this looks good. And of course, they're not gonna push the release date, and because of that, they get screwed over. I feel like as an outside observer, I can have a more critical eye over VFX, but it's kind of crazy that Taika, the one involved with the film's production, is the one making jokes at the expense of hardworking VFX artists. Okay. Does that look real? In that particular shot, no, actually. <laughs> It kind of leads me to believe that some people working in the MCU don't really think about how long it takes to create a visual effect. It's actually something you may come across if you work in 3D. Having someone above you that knows nothing about CG and VFX tell you what can and can't be done in the allotted time you have, when you, the artist, know better. There's not a lot of CGI. Some of the CGI is shit in this movie. There's a couple of shots that I wasn't happy with, okay? All right, here we have Michael Bay coming out and saying, yeah, some of the uh, the CGI in this movie is complete shit. Now this is definitely an assumption, but I am so certain that the reason Iron Man looked really bad at the end of Avengers Age of Ultron compared to like say Iron Man in 2008 was because they hadn't fully committed to his final design in the movie. They were like, I don't know what this guy's gonna look like, we're still designing him. And so the VFX artists, the CG artists had way less time to really make this guy look good in the movie. The time suits took oh, quite a while for us to, to land on. By the time we got a final version, we were already into principal photography. The costume department, they didn't have time to develop, fit, and fabricate the, all the costumes for those hero characters, so we ended up doing it digitally. And I know what you might be thinking, but it looked good though. Well, for starters, that doesn't excuse the practice, and two, the budget for Endgame was bigger. Endgame cost... $356 million! Oh my god! So of course they had way more artists that they can overwork to then finish this movie and make it look good. Here's something that's crazy. Avatar The Way of the Water, basically an all CG trailer, it cost $250 million. That's what happens when you finalize everything and then you get the CG artists to do their work. And the movie looks fucking phenomenal. I'm talking about visuals. You want to compare something crazy? Avatar 1. It looks as good as any movie from today. It cost... $237 million. Remember how good that movie looked, okay? Now I want you to guess Thor Love and Thunder's budget. If you said anything less than $237 million, you're wrong. Because the movie cost $250 million. What the fuck, my guy? There is no way. No fucking way. How, how do you mess up a movie that bad? Here is a satirical sketch of Taika Waititi and the VFX artist that did the floating head boy. Hey man, how's the shot coming along? Uh, oh, it's going good, Taika. I, I didn't have enough time to finish it, you know, but uh, you, you want to see it? Here's like kind of what the final product is going to oh, be. Yeah, sure. Let me see it. Okay, uh, here it is. Oh my god! It's beautiful, man! Good job! Oh. Good job, man! Thank you so much! Thank you! Thank you! Hey, bruv! Wh wh what are you doing to me, man? You you trying to ruin my reputation? What's this no, shot, No, bro? sir, What's no, this shot? I, you told me the shot was good. Buddy, they hated the shot so much that they're getting cam rips to make fun of it. Do it again. Do it over. Do the shot over. Do it no, again. No, please, it. sir. I'm chained up by my ankle, dude. Look at my ankle, bro. You have me chained up here. I want to go home. I'm hungry. Oh, are you hungry? I have food for you. You have food? Here, have a donut, you donut. Right there, there sir, we go. No, no, oh, open no, wide, no, open the no, no, fucking no, shop done. I swear no, to God, I'm gonna kill you and your entire family. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure that Taika Waititi isn't an evil person, but uh, I think it made the skit funnier. So. Hey, how's it going? It's the comedy police. Just want to let you know that that skit was satire. 
It was satire, okay? Thank you very much. Now, this was in the news just recently, but there were a bunch of VFX and CG artists that were coming out. <laughs> not, not coming out. Well, if they did, good for them. Good for them. No, coming out to talk against Marvel because of how they treat workers, VFX workers. And honestly, I've seen a lot of people go like, oh, this is an industry-wide problem. Like, a bunch of people suffer because of this. And, you know, I understand that. But, look. What I've heard from the people I know and the people that the people I know know is just... It's a common thing to hear that a lot of artists just like to work on maybe like advertising or sometimes even freelance. Because when you work on something as big as a movie, you are worked to the max. And that's just any movie. So imagining a Marvel movie... Wow. Kevin Feige, you got us fucked up. And they've actually come out to say, you know what, Marvel is thinking of creating their own VFX studio. So you can keep exploiting workers in your own studio? Like what, dude? It's actually mind boggling. So I'm gonna read some Reddit excerpts so you know exactly what these artists are saying. So this was posted four months ago, super recent. Guy goes, I am quite frankly sick and tired of working on Marvel shows. Marvel has probably the worst methodology of production and VFX management out there. They can never fix the look of the show before more than half of the allocated time for the show is over. What I literally have just been saying. The artists working on Marvel shows are definitely not paid equivalent to the amount of work they put in. The charm of working on a Marvel show is way overrated now, and I would rather be happy working on a TV series after decades and decades of this. That's brutal. And this person is not alone. This thread consists of so many artists that have had similar issues. Like, yeah, right here, people genuinely request to not work for Marvel. They just don't want to do it. They don't want to suffer. So yeah, this compositor here was brought onto a Marvel. Why is the sun just constantly, like, getting all up in my face? Fuck you, son. Oh no, not you, son. The sun. Shut the hell up, bitch. This compositor was all, wow, I'm gonna work on a Marvel film. They never got to. They only worked on the trailers, and ultimately those shots were never used. This is a big one. Part of it is an industry problem, but there sure are things that aren't being helped by the way things are run or handled on the Marvel side. I think at this point they realize they can throw money at anything or get away with more than most because of their rep of being Marvel, ergo a big deal. They do think they can do that because, like I said, they're thinking of creating their own studio, where they can get away with this sort of thing. And this is a good one right here. About half of all Marvel VFX are what I call hand beams. The rules for hand beams are, hand beams can't look like any other hand beam the showrunner has seen before. However, this hand beam should just look like another hand beam the showrunner saw, but totally different. The showrunner will know when they see it. The showrunner will never be satisfied with the effect because they have no idea what they want. After a hundred versions, they will go back to a version three from the first attempt. This happens all the time and I just realized that I left my bathroom door open um, because, guess what? I had to go take a big fat piss. Now, oh, you thought I was gonna say dump, right? <laughs> Oh my god, and you know, X Games Main thing is, the CG VFX artists are being exploited because they are ununionized. If you don't know, a union basically is an organization formed by workers to improve pay, benefits, and working conditions. It helps prevent workers from being exploited, and like I said earlier, VFX workers are ununionized. And because of that, Marvel can work these people as much as they want, and they can't really do shit. That's why, instead of being direct and committing to something, they're like, no, actually, we'll fix it in post. I think a lot of VFX artists know that term. That's because it is said a lot by people that don't know what they're doing. And so all of these people have to suffer and do all this work because people on top can't fucking decide the color of a suit. I closed the bathroom, okay? Now let me read to you some excerpts from Vulture and Gizmodo, two sites that have done articles on Marvel VFX. The visual effects artist for Vulture said, It's known across all visual effects houses that working on Marvel shows is really hard. When they worked on one movie, it was almost six months of overtime every day. Seven days a week, averaging 64 hours a week on a good week. Marvel works you so hard they've had co-workers sit next to them, break down, start crying. 
They've seen people have anxiety attacks on the phone. And here's a big issue. If an effects house upsets Marvel in any way, they likely are not going to come back to them for future projects. So, the VFX artists will always be doing their best to keep Marvel happy. Like I stated earlier, Marvel's famous for asking for a lot of changes. So imagine you're an artist, you're already overworked, but then Marvel asks for more changes. Way more than most clients, and some of those changes are really major. Maybe just a month or two before the movie comes out, Marvel will have the studios change the entire third act. And here's a huge issue I kicked myself over in my first VFX video. DNEG, the CG VFX studio that worked on the final battle in Black Panther, didn't have enough time to actually do the sequence. That's why it looks the way it does. They say part of the problem comes from the MCU itself because it has so many movies. It sets dates, and it's very inflexible. The show or movie has to come out on that day. But they are willing to do reshoots and big changes close to the release date without changing the date at all. And now what's crazy is that this artist actually references exactly what I say in my first VFX video. In post-production, they don't have a director of photography involved. So they have to come up with the shots, and that's why at the end of Black Panther, the physics are fucking crazy. The camera's floating, everyone's moving like a cartoon. For the final battle, our department provided us with an overall map of where the different beats were going to take place. There was a lot of nondescript areas. We would try and make it recognizable as an area, with the collapsed A, for example. In the Gizmodo article, a VFX artist, Jason, says that Phase 5 was going to dominate a lot of his friends' careers for the next decade. He says and they quote, you see all these timelines for films and just think it won't ever stop. The workload becomes agonizing at times, we're all just sick and tired of superheroes. But studios, he said, rely on superhero work and Marvel in order to make ends meet. And guess what? Working in Avengers Infinity War and Endgame, they actually bumped up the release by a month and they did not tell the artists. They found out from a press release that they had one less month to work on all the shots in the movie. And here's another big thing I said earlier too, now being corroborated. Hector, a visual effects artist, says that, yeah, even up until the last week or so, Marvel still wasn't sure what they wanted a gigantic set piece to look like. They were still doing concept art, which is supposed to be the first thing you nail down before you start working on the pieces that will eventually be composited together to make up a shot. You got lighting renders, effect simulations, map paintings, animation, all of this ready to go. Marvel still hadn't approved concept art. And they say this isn't a fluke, this is a part of the process. Marvel deliberately shoots their films in such a way that they're able to change details, big and small, up until the very last minute. Very little shot practically, even the stuff that's practical goes through touch-ups. And sometimes you get a plate of someone's face against something super poorly lit, and there's really nothing you can do to make it better. So when people like me go, wow, the visual effects look terrible, they go, no, you should have seen the plate. You should have seen what we were given. Because that's what was shit. I recommend you check out both those articles, they're linked in the description. Marvel is still overusing CG and VFX, and workers are suffering for it. They're still doing this, again, because they can. And it's gonna keep going until these artists get unionized. And holy shit, this is a message to all the entertainment companies that overwork their employees, specifically VFX and CG artists. They are people. They are the reason you are getting so much fucking money. Stop abusing them. Thank you. Also, go fuck yourself, because you've been doing this for so long. So, that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out Interstellar Ranger Commence. It's an independent original animated series that I've been developing. Episode 2 just came out, and it's doing decently for an original project, but hey, if you checked it out, it would mean the world to me. I've worked on it for so long. I've got so many talented people to work on it as well, and it would mean the world to us if you gave it a watch. And to those that have watched both episodes of Interstellar Ranger Commence, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you and your positive comments that just really boost the morale of everyone working on the project. We love you guys. Thank you so much. And of course, for the fan art of the day, thank you so much, Lack of Creativity, for this poster of She from Interstellar Ranger Commence, and I love seeing Hope and Itsuki there in the reflection of the mask. Really, really sick. Thanks so much. And of course, patrons. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Thank you so much for supporting Interstellar Ranger Commence. And hey, you've been welcome to the table. 
But if you want to stay at the table, be a part of the table, well then, turn on notifications, subscribe, and you will have a chair. And that means you can sit at the table anytime you want and vibe with the rest of us. And listen, it's a nice table. We have a chill time. We have all the foods you want, even vegan options for you weirdos out there. I'm joking. I have vegan friends. Please, my vegan friends, don't kill me. Holy shit, they're at my door. So thank you so much for watching the video, and I hope you come back to the table.